What's going on guys? This is Tosker and after my introduction to WPF video, I decided that I really would like to explain the basic controls we can use in our XAML and how they function. If you're familiar with WPF controls, then you may want to skip past the control portion of this series. And with all that being said, let's get started. First we're going to discuss a stack panel, and a stack panel is a layout control that holds other controls within it. This control stacks the elements within it vertically or horizontally depending on what you set its orientation as. By default the stack panel will have a vertical orientation. And we're going to start this with just a simple opening and closing tag of stack panel. And inside we're going to create four buttons that I'm going to name buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4. And for time's sake just copy pasting. Now notice the buttons fill the entirety of the stack panels width. Now this is the function of the button itself rather than the stack panel. Not all controls will fill the entirety of the stack panel. Those are usually what you use dock panels for if that's what you want which we'll be covering after this. So Again, notice the default orientation is vertical, so these buttons will be placed above and below one another based on the hierarchy they are placed in the stack panel. For example, this control is placed, uh, button 1 is placed above button 2, therefore in the design it's going to be so. And 3 above 4, and 4 below 3, and so on. We can also use stack panels within stack panels to achieve specific order and placing. If I wanted buttons 1 and 2 side by side while having buttons 3 and 4 side by side, but wanted these two sets above and below one another, I could do so by using multiple stack panels. So here I'm going to create two child stack panels and in this case, because again the default orientation is vertical, going to set its orientation to horizontal and we want two of these so we will simply copy paste. I then am going to place the first child uh, within the first child rather the buttons one and two and then in the second child buttons three and four. Now notice the buttons are no longer stretching and again this is due to the buttons themselves rather than the functioning of the stack panel. Uh, but notice how uh, nicer this look it looks. It's almost like uh, when you played the old Pokemon games and you had your four attacks uh, how they're side by side but in a small rectangle. Uh, you can achieve this pretty well with stack panels and even if we did something like button 5 here, notice it's going to also do that unless we put it in another stack panel and we said orientation horizontal. Oh, and don't mind that still being there, that's actually a glitch in Visual Studio. It's doing that time to time for me. So this isn't really there, but it's displaying it. Uh, but notice how uh, nicer this looks and you could also imagine setting up a navigation menu or s something of the sort with that. Next in our WPF control arsenal we have the dock panel. The dock panel is another layout control that docks elements to specific positions within it based on the values left, right, top, bottom, and if you want center it's usually the remaining item that is not defined. One tricky thing with dock panels is the order in which you place the controls within your XAML are very important to how you want it to actually look. So here we're going to create a dock panel with a simple opening and closing tag of it. Now in a dock panel, as I mentioned earlier with the center, the last child control inside of it will always fill the remaining space unless specified not to. So when I add a button in here, you'll notice it fills the entirety of the space. Now I can dock this left, right, top, or bottom and it won't seem to change. 
And this is because, as I mentioned, the last child will fill the remaining space and without any other controls to conflict with it, it's just going to use everything regardless of where you dock it. Now if I create another button and have the old one docked at the top and the new one docked at the bottom, you're going to see something like this. Two. Okay. Well, actually, you're going to first see it docked from left to right, which is how it is going to be by default unless you specifically dock the control by using dock panel dot dock and then top for button one. Then for button two, I'm going to say dock panel dot dock bottom. Now again, notice button two doesn't really seem to change. And again, it's because it's filling the remaining space. Now, our top button will only take up the space it needs and our bottom button will fill. What if though, I wanted only a button on the top and a button on the bottom and empty space in between. Well, this is where in the dock panel you would have to set its last child to fill property to false. So in our dock panel parent, we're going to find its last child fill property. And then here we set it to false. And then you'll notice it'll only take up the space it needs regardless if it's the last control. Now, if I wanted a button left, I would create a new button and dock it to the left. Dock panel dot dock left call it button three. Notice how although it is on the left, the first two buttons actually have priority over the top and the bottom left. And this is because inside our XAML they come before our button three. You can think of it like, I was here first, so this is all mine. If we cut and pasted out button three and place it at the top of the controls in our panel, we would see that button three will claim authority over everything to the left and even the top and bottom. So we take button three, put it here. Sorry guys, had to cut the audio. My dog came barging in my room. <laughs> uh, so back to where we were though. So notice button uh, three, when it's placed at the top, it's going to claim authority over the entirety of the left, and then button one and two will get the top or bottom depending on what's left. If we placed button three as the second dock panel child, we would see that our top will have priority over it, but our bottom will not. So notice top will claim the entirety of uh, the dock panel at the top. Left will get the left and then bottom will get whatever's left of the bottom after the left takes up its space. I guess you could say it's a dock eat dock world out there. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I promise that I won't do that again. <laughs> and Lastly, we'll create a fourth button as our third child in the dock panel. So here we go. Got button, button, four. This time though, just to show you one last time, I will remove the last child fill property so you can see that now button two as our last child uh, or button four rather as our last child will take up the remaining space. So we just remove our last child fill property and notice it takes up the remaining space. And also notice if we said doc panel dot doc right button five. Notice now this will dock right it'll take up the remaining space and then just shove a uh, button four over here to the left okay guys well that was a uh, video on stack panels and dock panels and I will be covering more controls that are more commonly used in WPF uh, again 
new to all of this so feel free to critique my methods and how I'm talking or if maybe I'm too stuttery or not explaining things or if I'm over explaining things um, still trying to figure out how I actually want to conduct this series but a lot of time on my hands so I figured I would do it uh, thank you for watching if you liked it subscribed if you don't leave a comment and still subscribe maybe I don't know uh, but I, I hope regardless of how it was conducted you at least learned something from this.